Let me think. Let me think. I hate on the spot. <laughs> I know. I hate on the spot stuff too. Um, I just remember from freshman year when they first met, thinking to myself, I don't even think I've told them this, thinking to myself that they would look good together. But Christopher was kind of interested in another girl, not really. She was after him. Um, <laughs> for a while. No. Like, and then finally, that would work out, and I know he'd been praying and stuff, and I didn't mention anything to him. Um, but eventually, they found each other and hit it off. So, um, just that they're perfect for each other. Um, their temperaments, everything is is so much alike, and I can't wait to see how God uses. Is this? Are they're gonna see this, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see how God uses you guys in further ministry. I'm very excited about it, and I hope everything goes perfectly today. <laughs> okay. Do you have? Do you have any advice for the future? Yeah. Advice? <laughs> advice from a single person. I was gonna say. <laughs> from someone who's not married. Remember those days when you were not, and you wished you were. And when, it, when those hard times come, from my experience, when those hard times come in your marriage, and you're wishing you were single again, just remember how much you wished then that you were married. Wow. <laughs> Christopher and I have known each other since we were like born, and probably one of my favorite memories with Christopher is. Um, Oh, there's so many. Um, probably every summer we'd end up doing the same thing. We would go up to his house and sit on his front swing and basically ask, ask each other all day long, what do you want to do today? And then by the end of the day, we would just sat on the swing for like five hours and hadn't done anything, but just sit there and talked. And that was repeated day after day after day because neither of us decided on what to do. So um, that's probably my favorite memory um, of us growing up together. Okay, do you have... Do you have any advice for the future? Whew. Um, or, you know, I mean, or anything that you just want to tell them? Whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, just keep your eyes focused on Christ and um, love your wife um, and minister to her and don't, don't ever get so caught up in your ministry that you forget to minister to your family and to the people around you um, because um, like Paul said, if there's not love, then it's all worthless, so. Mm, no. I did a circus with Sarah once. You did what for her? A circus. Yeah? Can you tell me about that? Um, well, she was in it, too, so. Yeah, um, and so was Nessa. What's she doing? What's Sarah doing in the circus? Um, well, she, first she was an elephant with Nessa, and then she was a horse with me. And then we just did dances and clowns and stuff. I don't know that I have too many funny memories, except that Hi, um, Christopher um, always so loves, and still does, love making Sarah laugh. And she does, he does that so well, oh, to everybody as well. But for Sarah, it was just so cute to see him being able okay. to do that <laughs> to, to someone who he really deeply cared about. And just to see how they, they connect so well together, and they really are so good for each other. But one good thing that I remember um, that was really important was at the very beginning, when Christopher was actually asking her um, to court her, um, and he was also sure, you know, yep, tomorrow's going to be the day, and after that we'll be courting, and Sarah came back that night, and um, Christopher had said, well, she said that she needs some time to pray about it, and just the whole fact that she thought she was ready, that both of them thought they were ready, and she still took an extra couple days to pray about it was just what kind of, I think all of us were excited at the, at the point, knowing that this is what God wants, this is definitely what God's will is for them, and that was very exciting to see, and so with that as a, as a, a foundation for their the whole relationship, I think it's really going to be God honoring in the whole time that they're having. So I love you guys and I'm so proud of you guys. So happy wedding day! Do you have any memories of Chris or anything? Or school or Chris? Or what? Not really, no. Um, oh boy, let me think about this. <sighs> what, what did Christopher do funny at school all the time? Funny at school? He's always funny. I know. He he makes the entire student body laugh. Everybody gets up there. They, 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 the last time they called Christopher St. Clair up to do some random thing at the student body, nobody knew who he was. He come up there and just to do uh, <laughs> to it was the clapping game where you have to go and like you, you put on this thing and if they clap then you know, you're doing the right thing. And so he goes up there and 
It took, it took like the whole student body time just to, like, to figure out that he puts the hat on, he sits in the chair, and everybody claps at him. And he's doing his whole little one man show up there on stage, and everyone's just cracking up. And then the bell rang, and everybody still stayed and watched him. So he's, he's the love, he's the clown that everybody loves. Do you have anything you want to say from a sister, uh, sister's perspective? Probably so. <laughs> um, from a sister, from your littlest sister. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christopher, for um, the example that you have been all my life, and I'm not going to cry. <laughs> no, I'm not, but you have truly been um, just a wonderful big brother and always encouraging me. I remember, I remember this. When I turned 15, I had got my ears pierced and I was growing up and one day I was having a bad attitude or something <laughs> and yes, I was growing up and uh, <laughs> and Christopher said, Melody, you're 15 now, you should be growing up, you should be getting mature and at that moment I was just like, I was very humbled and I knew <laughs> that you were right and I was putting away childish things and growing up and you helped me to become the woman that I am today and I thank you so much for that Christopher. And Sarah, I'm so, so thankful for you. You are perfect for Christopher, and you two are going to have a wonderful life together. And I thank you so much for the godly woman that you are, um, and how you will help Christopher in the future, and just support him, and be the woman that he needs. And I love you both so much. I don't even know where to begin with this stuff. I've been thinking about my speech for a while, and I have no idea where to even start. Alright, we're going to do one final There's the advice part, there's the I'm so happy for her and the life she's about to right, embark up. on and how wonderful it's going to be. Let's go. I was thinking when you're asking them advice over there, I was thinking my advice for marriage seems pretty basic, put the other before yourself. Like you love them as you love yourself, which means like, I don't know, my advice in that aspect is to, like if somebody, if he hurts your feelings, if he does something mean to you, before you tell him what he did, before you get mad and to maybe be mad and hurt, but do an act of service for him before you talk about it. You know, make him a meal, fold his clothes, like do something, serve him as your husband. And that's just my advice. I think that it'll make a difference. Oh, and shoot, him, shoot, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and him the same for her, you know, when he's upset with her for something, do an act of service for her before you get all worked up. I think it does something for your heart when you serve the other person. Even It just does, it makes a big difference. And choose to put them above yourself and not, like if you messed up and you hurt them, would you want them to flip out on you and act all crazy or would you want them to have mercy and forgive and treat you right? Anyway, so that's my whole marriage thing. As far as my sister, do you want to use the smaller curling iron? This is iron unreal. I can't believe this is happening. A little baby yeah, sister. Yeah, we're going to use the straightener. And I'm happy though. Chris is a great guy. Where are you going to use that? He's, if I was going to, I don't know if I was going to pick somebody, if I'd like pick him out of the crowd because she was like, I'm not marrying a redhead. <laughs> I didn't say that. But she loves him and they are perfect together and I just, couldn't be happier for him. So. Oh, Sarah is you my don't wonderful do that is adorable. This is my first. He brought joy to our family from the first moment we laid eyes on him. I don't care. I'm here for support. It would probably both great. You have a big dog. We can't do this already. I love her and she's grown up to be such a beautiful I love you, Sarah. I don't want to say that on the do you have any advice for the future? Sarah, what did you want for him? Follow the Lord always. Keep him first in your marriage. It would be great. It was like at one of the Christmas What was? That's right. When I met her, when I first met her. So, like, it was Christmas and then. The whole entire family came over, but I didn't know Sarah. So she came over with everyone else. So I got that stage. Now I met her. I remember when he and I were in a play together at school, the Barretts of Wimple Street. Uh, no, Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre. We were in Jane Eyre together. And he was playing a very old man. And which was kind of funny because he got casted a lot at school as a very old man, but he did it really well. And every time you come out of the back room with his makeup on and his 
hair all powdered white and everything like that. It was really funny, and he'd kind of hobble around, and we all thought that he did that extremely well, and that was just kind of my memory for Chris for that semester. And uh, every time I saw him, it kind of popped into my head, old man. And then he played an old guy for um, Anne Green Gables as well, and thought he did that real well. So I think he's a very, uh, very promising future as an old man. Do you have any advice for the future? Advice? I think one of the biggest things that has been helpful to me in the past has just been mindful to the authorities that God has put in my life. And I'm sure that that will be the same for him. And I know he's been very obedient and very willing to listen to the people who have been above him, his parents and everybody else. And that for me has been one of the biggest things God's blessed me with is, is listening to the counsel and the wisdom from people who have gone before and done the things that we are, we are planning on doing. And, and God is really just blessed. Um, listening and obeying to the wisdom that he's put in the, the people who've gone before us. Do you have anything in particular that you want to just tell me? Christopher, uh, be, uh, it's been really fun getting to know you over the last couple of years. You are very, very, very gifted and talented young man and I, I look up to you a lot and I respect you a lot and it's a blessing for me to be able to be part of your wedding and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you more in the future and, and seeing you around at school this coming year. Awesome. Well, let's see. I don't want to give too many away because it's coming up in the speech. Are you going to video the speech? Uh, yeah. Phil, Best man yeah. speech? Okay. Um, memories of Christopher growing up. Um, Christopher, you always had a very sensitive uh, and a sweet heart and a spirit. Great sense of humor. Um, remember many laughs um, at many crazy times together. Um, I'm very thankful for, for your life and uh, where God has taken you and all that God's done in your life. And um, i excited about this day. It's finally here. I'm proud of you, brother. Do you have any advice for the future? Advice for the future? Um, laugh a lot. Um, love one another. Uh, seek after Christ. Make Him be your rock and your foundation. Um, forgive uh, each other um, as Christ forgave you. Um, and stay, stay true to the vows that you make today. And do you have anything personal you want to tell Him? Just for who? Just to Him. Just, just for Christopher. Christopher, I love you. I'm excited to see what God has in store for you. Uh, down the road and the ministry that you and Sarah will have to many people. Um, you're amazingly gifted and talented in so many areas and God's going to use that uh, to impact lives all over the world, I just know. And uh, I love you very much, both of you guys. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm so thankful for the answers to prayer that God has given in your life with Sarah. We've prayed for you since before you were born. And God has brought the perfect woman for you. And I'm so grateful to the Lord. She is your perfect match. And we're excited to see what God has for you in store. So thankful for the way that you have honored the Lord in your relationship over the last three years and developing this um, relationship with each other. And excited to see where God's going to take you in the future. We love you both. We're so grateful to the Lord for your lives, for your commitment to Him, for your service to Him, for your love for us. Thank you for being a loving and obedient and honoring son. You're going to be a great husband. You guys are going to have a great life together. We love you so much. Okay. I remember when Tim got married to Sarah and then Jonathan at one time was dating a Sarah. And I remember when you said, Mom and Dad, I will never marry a Sarah. And we said, don't ever say never. You just don't know what the Lord has for you. And lo and behold, you get a Sarah, but she's Sarah without an H, as you were quick to point out to us. So we're very grateful for our next Sarah St. Clair, and love you guys so much. Um, I met Sarah on the first day of freshman English class, and we were sitting next to each other, and the first thing she said to me was, yeah, I don't really do the whole homework thing. And then we've seriously been like best friends ever since, and I've been helping her and reminding her to finish her homework ever since that first day of freshman year. and But she really is the most encouraging, one of the most godly people I know, and I'm so thankful for her. And I'm so happy for her and Chris. And I'm just so glad that I've been able to be friends with them all through college, and I wish them the best in everything. That's awesome. Do you have any advice for the future? Um, well, I'm not married, so um, stay married. Um, <laughs> No, just really to put God first in everything because that, I mean, everybody always says that, but it applies in every aspect of life, everything from school to marriage and every relationship. And I know that as they do that, God's going to bless them even more than he already has. So. Awesome. Do you have anything personal you want to say to you? Um, just really to Sarah. She has seriously made me who I am today. And just from those late night, deep theological chats in our dorm room to 
the rides to Walmart and getting lost on the freeway and almost going to Alabama when we are almost late back to campus. And I just, I'm so thankful for you and I love you, Sarah. And I just am, I am, I am who I am because of you. So I love you. Ready? Oh my Sarah, honey, this day has come and it's closing a, a page in the chapter of your precious life and opening a brand new one and Christopher's the main character <laughs> other than God in your lives and he's first in both your lives and you know Granny, it's the, the desire of my heart and you have fulfilled that. Sarah, you know Granny's heart. I'm just so thankful that I've got to spend these 22 years with you and, and I remember when you were just a little girl and we'd take walks down Hart Road and you'd pick wildflowers. You loved all the wildflowers and you'd pick bouquets of them and I just love those memories with you and the times that you come and spend the summer with Granny in the country and we would, as soon as school was out, we'd start planning, probably before school was out, we'd start planning the week that you would get to come or the two weeks and I just loved our mornings when we'd just sleep in and then we'd get up and maybe have breakfast, maybe not and we'd just sit on the porch and you remember that morning we were sitting on the front porch not really doing anything, just sitting there and we saw a big black snake crawling up and and I ran and got the hoe and you ran and got your camera and, and you killed it. I killed it while you took pictures of it. And when you and Brayden had come down together and you'd take long walks on the dirt road and you'd pack up your little survival kit and some food and Granny would always make you take the telephone so I could call you and you could call me if you got out of sight. And, oh my goodness. And then when all the memories of all the important things in your life would Granny come to school and visit you and your friends in school and and when I came down for college graduation and I got to see you walk across the platform your long beautiful hair flowing behind your black gown and and all just all the memories all the talks that we've had and and swimming in the pool and relaxing on the floaties and Papa will bring our lunch out to us on a tray and we'd listen to romantic music as we would like from the 50s and stuff and and we would just enjoy that time and I've just enjoyed all the years watching you come to this precious point in your life and then when you shared with Granny the time that you were sitting out in the van and waiting on Mom after school and the encounter that you had with God and He spoke to your heart and you gave your heart and your life to Him and everything became so clear to you when you were about 15 years old then. And the time that Granny came and stayed with you when Mom and Dad went on a cruise, I think, and remember the morning it was pouring down raining and you were supposed to be going to school and Granny was supposed to be getting gas and remember all that when we was changing the filter in the car and we did the wrong thing and the robber came in and robbed the store and then it was too late to go to school so we went shopping and we had fun anyway. Anyway, and now all of this, and I'm just so, so proud of you, of the young woman that you've become. So proud of your choices in life. So proud that you've put, I heard that. <laughs> that was my sister saying she hoped you had enough film in there. I'm about done, Sarah. That was Aunt Terry. Anyway. I love you so much, Sarah, and I'm so thankful that Granny gets to share in this part in your life. And all my prayers for you up to this point have been answered, and you know Granny will always continue to pray for you. And now as you and Christopher become one person, I'll pray for both of you together. I love you so much, Sarah and Michelle. We met Sarah because we were in one church and then we went to a different one because we kind of just wasn't going with that church so we just so we went to Calvary where they first started doing it and so we met the pastor and then we met Sarah and and ever since then we st she was being like our babysitter and yeah. nanny and so after that we just started to like her coming and then we got excited and then I started to like her so my mom and Sarah talked, and then I talked to Sarah, and then Sarah made that deal with me about if I get to 20 before she gets married, that I would, that she would marry me. And so, that's why I'm not very happy with this wedding, but I'm okay with it because Christopher is very nice and sweet. I he's like a friend, and 
just because I met him ever since I met him last Christmas and I've talked to him before that. I didn't really know him, but he is pretty nice.